And today, all the Hotchers who live in Hotch Hotch are watching the Watch Watcher, watching Watch Watch, watching the Watcher. Hello and welcome back, y'all, to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardiac. I am Barbarella. And this is Frank. Construction man Frank. No, he doesn't want to be construction. It's it's more fashion than utility. Oh, it's like those uh those like vests that look like bulletproof vests, but really it's just style. Um Yeah, it's 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 you're not supposed to even like associate it. It's like back like, in the uh, day when like a girl would wear like a bomber jacket and it's like She's not a pilot. She's not a pilot. Right. It's just style. Jeans are like I'm wearing jeans right now, and that used to be a, that's like, a, a workman's pants on the railroad or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, Frank, good for you. Um, you exploring your fashion career, no shame in the game. Yeah. But um, yeah, guys, it's Friday. We've reached the end of the week. We've reached yes. the last podcast of April. Is what we've reached. Mm-hmm. Um, you would never know it had you step outside. It's cold where we live. Yeah, at, and it, and it shouldn't be. Uh, you can never you can never know with these days. My uncle is on a uh, fishing trip right now. Is he down in uh, South Carolina? South. Sure, north doesn't matter. The Carolinas. The point is, it's an annual fishing trip, and it's always great. Start of spring. Well, maybe it's warm down there. That's the point of my story. It's snowing. Oh. No. Yeah. Sorry, Carolina. Sorry, sorry for the snow. Um, sorry for the fishing trip. Sorry, your trip was so lame. <laughs> <laughs> but hey you know what we're, we're it's it is what it is you gotta be happy on the cold days gotta be happy on the warm days yeah gotta be happy every day you have to be happy every day and i just want to tell you something you're getting ready for your birthday i am and you're you'll go- hear about it Oof, once may starts spencer your birthday is yes. coming up yes, it's it a is. celebration of, of years yeah 26 of them <laughs> yeah well did you know that on january 18th in the year 2028 you will have been alive for one billion seconds that's it that's a wait no that's a lot that's a lot of time well for, it's right. yeah what, because, am I, what am i trying to say <laughs> you know how much it how much time it is because it's <sighs> it's you'll be like 32 years old yeah no what's fascinating to me is always the trying to wrap your head like when you hear about billionaires right wrap your head around how much money that really is right and for, I'm not even there yet. I'm not even at a billion second. One, if I was getting a dollar from the day I was born every second. Every second. So that's $1, $2, $3, yeah. $4, $5, $6, $7 more. I would not even have a billion seconds yet. Right. That's you, too much. Yeah. So it takes us Nobody about. Nobody should be a billionaire then. It, t- it takes about um, 32 years for you to reach one billion seconds so there's um there's a few websites if you just go and google and type in how many seconds have i been alive yeah and then you just put in your um they want to know your um birth hour as well that makes they'll tell you to the second yes. when this will happen i just put noon like because i don't know and um yeah and so then it, it'll also say your first billion because then you start your second billion which you'll finish up around 63 you know 60 whatever that's like i like i said just now nobody should be a billionaire then that's too much money. Yeah. That's too much money for one person. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So I thought that was fun. So people, if you... Um, it's depressing. If you, <laughs> so. I only have two billion seconds. What am I going to do with it? You could also say like how young you are. Like I, I don't even have a billion seconds yet. So. I'm not even a billion seconds years old. <laughs> you guys are so... Bo- okay, boomer. Yeah. What do you have a billion seconds what are you, to your name? You're starting on your second billion. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of seconds. I'm right. still in the... 600,000 range. Yeah. But all right. Well, yeah. I mean, go check it out. See how many seconds you've been alive. Because every second should be cherished in life. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? And uh, what you choose to do with those seconds is what really matters. Mm -hmm. I choose to dance. It's National Dance Day. Is it? Yeah. I I thought you didn't know what day it was. Yeah. Bust a move. It's April 29th. And I want to call you on your bs yesterday how about that we talk about holidays i'll a break lot. the whole studio down you, you know what <laughs> you we talk about holidays a lot around here yeah because we like them we like the these little quirky dorky holidays mm. um it was last yesterday april 28th was national blueberry pie day yeah and you said no. it's not blueberry season it's blueberry season no it isn't yes, it is it's i refuse not where i live end of march april is early 
blueberry season. When did they plant them? We have a blueberry tree and it's a it's a it sticks right now. Listen. Listen. I'm just telling you what I know. Did you make the website? What? I'm just t- <laughs> I I I, lo- I googled I said what's blueberry season? It said there's three seasons. Early blueberry season, mid blueberry season, and late blueberry season. Well, then I guess the, we are coming to the end being April. We are coming to the end of early blueberry season, which means it's about to start prime blueberry season. It's about to be prime blueberry about, season. <laughs> yeah, where are my blueberry pies at? Um, okay, okay. All right, so take, no, take your I, shame. I, I don't take my shame. And then I, I made a little jest in the yesterday's podcast, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? That doesn't make sense. It's like if ice cream day was in February. It's not. It's July 17th. Um, so it looks like all the holidays are placed no, exactly where think, they're meant to be. Okay. Today is the 60th day of spring. 60th? Yeah. Wow, really? Yeah. That's not fair. We shouldn't be this cold in the 60th day of spring. It's only 33 days will be summer. Okay. You're new. Well, what's up with your numbers today? Did you know that the calendar of 2033 is going to be the if, is recycle, reuse, and re- reduce? Take Keep your calendars of this year, 2022. You can reuse it in 2033. It's going to be the exact same. So, man, in 11 years, we're going to have like calendars, like nanobot calendars yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or we'll be in the exact same place we are. But nobody's holding on to a calendar for 11 they years. They have to, for, um, because it'll, you know, the 29th will be on a Friday. Okay. Well, I'll see you then. So, you, you, you say, uh, well, in 2028, a billion seconds. Yeah. 2032, same 33. calendar. 33, same calendar. What about 20, what about April 29th? 8th, 2022. 29th. 29th, 2022. <laughs> it, I remember that day. It was Dr. Seuss Day. We are... Only on Croak and Crow. We are being like the book of numbers right now. Shout mm-hmm. out. We're just numbering things. Yeah. Number all the people. One, two, three. Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, God is there. Therefore... How many times should you forgive someone? 102. Seven, <laughs> seven times 77. Okay, well. One more than that, and it's across the line. No. Yeah. You start over just like the billion. Once you reach a billion, you start recounting again. <laughs> All right, guys. That's enough about numbers. It's a great day. It's a great Friday. I hope you are enjoying it. So um, why don't we enjoy it a little more with a little something special? Every Friday, we have a little segment for the past, like, what, 20 weeks? Mm-hmm. We just can't get away from numbers, can we? 20 weeks. I love numbers. <laughs> I'm not good with math, but I love numbers. Oh. Yeah. And then just the way they. The way they just I'm add, one of those add up and divide. No, like, you know, when I see the clock says, you know, 11, 11. Yeah. Or I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. 11, 11. <laughs> Make a wish. Yeah. Um, every Friday, we have a little segment called Dr. Seuss Friday. Yippee ki Dr. Seuss, he wrote plenty of books, I'm sure. Anybody ever watches this will have heard the name Dr. Seuss and will probably read more than one of his books. Or heard, or been read to. Or been read to or been around someone and osmosisized yeah. the um, Dr. Seuss words. One fish, two fish. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And so what we do on Dr. Seuss Friday is we t- read a book. You might say that's a children's book. I would disagree. Actually, I wouldn't. I would say, yeah, it's a children's book. But it was written by an adult with a big old brain who is given messages to those children those malleable little brains and we are going back with our adult brains and looking at a simple silly book and finding the deeper meaning in it and maybe using it and letting it, letting the ideas carry within us through the weekend the week and years to come up until you have no more seconds left so we've read books that are known we've read books that are unknown we just finished up on a collection of books but today we're starting a new one. This book, have you ever heard it? Did I ever tell you how lucky you are? Have you ever heard of this book? No, I don't think I did. I've never have. Dr. Seuss wrote and illustrated 44 world famous books for children and their lucky parents. That's it? I don't know. What happens when we come to the end? I know. Start over. We don't have to start. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> the second, the second Doctor Seuss. Uh... All right, guys. Um, yeah, never read this book. Don't know anything about it. Fun little cover. There's a old wise man. Nothing like a good old wise man. Yeah, the classic. Ask the wise man on the mountain. Oh, buy any two freshly baked cookies, brownies, or loaves. Get one free. Mix or match. What Thank you, Barnes and Noble. All right, guys. Let's just get right into it, shall we? Did I ever tell you how lucky you are? By Dr. Seuss. 
This book with love is for Phyllis the Jackson. Phyllis the Jackson? That's what it says? Yeah. <clears throat> when I was quite young, quite small for my size, I met an old man in the desert of Dries, and he sang me a song I will never forget, at least, well, I haven't forgotten it yet. He sat in a terribly prickly place, but he sang with a sunny sweet smile on his face. When you think things are bad, when you feel sour and blue, when you start to get mad, you should do what I do. Just tell yourself, Ducky, you, you're really quite lucky. Some people are much more, oh, ever so much more, oh, muchly, much, much more unluckier than you. Be glad you don't work on the Bungle Bung Bridge that they're building across Boober Bay on Bum Ridge. It's a troublesome world, all the people who are in it are troubled with troubles almost every minute. You ought to be thankful a whole heap and a lot for the places and people you're lucky you're not. Just suppose, for example, you lived in Gazat and caught got caught in the traffic on Zat Highway 8. Oh, I read that wrong. Just suppose, for example, you lived in Gazate and got caught in the traffic on Zate Highway 8. Or suppose, just for instance, you lived in Gazare and with your bedroom up here and your bathroom up there. Suppose, just suppose, you were poor Herbie Hart who has taken his thumb dim bum latter apart. He'll never will get it together, I'm sure. He never will get... Oh my God, this is like the most tongue twister book. I told you my mom hated these books. I like it because because they're not real words, so it doesn't matter how you say it. It does because it messes up the rhyme. But that doesn't matter. Up. Look at the Bible. We say things wrong, and Bible experts will say, it's not filet mignon, it's Philemon. And it and we know what it means. It, it's 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 still working. So okay. don't even stress. Okay. Suppose just suppose you were poor. Or, I can't even say poor. That's a normal word. Suppose just suppose you were poor Herbie Hart, who has taken his thromdim boo ladder apart. He never will get it together. I'm sure. He never will know if the gick or the gore fits in the scrux or the snucks or the snore. Yes, ducky, you're lucky. You're not Herbie Hart. Who has taken his throm dim boo ladder apart. Think they work you too hard? Think of poor Ali Sard. He has to mow grass in his uncle's backyard. And his quick grown grass. And it grows as he mows it. The faster he mows it, the faster he grows it. And all that his stingy old uncle will pay. For his shoveling that, for his shoving that mower around in the hay. Is the piffless pay of two duklas a day. And Ollie can't live on such piffless pay. So, he has to paint flagpoles on Sundays and grooves. How lucky you are you don't live in his shoes. And poor Miss Bix every morning at six. Poor Miss Bix has his bo borfin to fix. It doesn't seem fair. It do doesn't seem right. But his borfin just seems to go schlump every night. It schlumps in a heap, sadly, need and repair. Bix figures is due to the lo local night air. It takes him all day to unschlump it, and then the night air comes back and it schlumps once again. So you don't so don't feel blue, don't get down in the dumps. You're lucky you don't have a borfin that schlumps. And while we're at it, consider the schlots, the crumple horn web footed green bearded schlots, whose tail is entailed with unsolvable knots. If he isn't muchly more worse off than you, I'll eat my umbrella, that's what I'll do. And you're lucky indeed you don't need, you don't ride on a camel. To ride on a camel, you sit on the whammel. A whammel, you know, is a sort of a saddle held on by a button that's known as a faddle. And boy, if your old whammel fiddle, faddle gets loose, I'm telling you, ducky, you're gone like a goose. And poor Mr. Potter, T crosser, I dotter, he has to cross T's and he has to dot I's in I and T factory out of Van Nuys. Oh, the jobs people work out out west near Houch Houch. There's a Houch Houcher bee watcher. His job is to watch. Is to keep both his eyes on the lazy town bee. A bee that is watched will work harder, you see. Well, he watched and he watched, but in spite of his watch, that bee didn't work harder not to watch. So then somebody said, our old bee watching man, this isn't bee watching as hard as he can. He ought to be watched by another Houch Houcher. The thing that we need is a bee watch watcher. Well, 
The bee watch watcher watched the bee watcher. He didn't watch well, so the hotch hotcher had to come in as a watch watch watcher. And today, all the hotchers who live in hotch hotch are watching the watch watcher watching watch watch watching the watcher who's watching that bee. You're not a hotch watcher. You're lucky, you see. And how fortunate you're not, Professor Debreeze, who has spent the past 32 years, if you please, trying to teach Irish ducks how to read Javanese. And think of the poor puffing poogle horn players who have to parade down the poogle horn stairs every morning to wake up the Prince of Pooboken. It's awful how often their poogles get broken. And oh, I just suppose you were poor Harry Hotto. Try as he will, he can't make his shadow. He thinks that perhaps something's wrong with his giz, and I think, by golly, there probably is. And the brothers bazoo, the poor brothers bazoo, suppose your hair grew like theirs happened to do. You think you're unlucky? I'm telling you, ducky, some people are muchly, oh, ever so muchly, muchly more, more, more unlucky than you. And suppose that you lived in the forest in France, where the average young person just hadn't a chance to escape the perilous pants-eating plants, but your pants are safe, you're a fortunate guy, and you ought to be shouting, how lucky am I? And speaking of plants, you should be greatly gladish, you're not Farmer Falkenberg, 17th, 17th Radish. And you're so lucky, so you're, and you're so, so lucky you're not Gucky Gown, who lives by himself 90 miles out of town. In the ruins of Ronk, Ronk is rather run down. And you're so, so, so lucky you're not a left sock, left behind by mistake in the caverns of Croc. Thank goodness for all of the things that you're not. Thank goodness you're not something someone forgot and left all alone in some puncturous place like a rusty tin coat hanger hanging in space. That's why I say, ducky, don't grumble, don't stew. Some creditors are much, much, oh, ever so much, much, so muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. I hated it. <laughs> you hated it. I hated it. No, you shouldn't hate it. I didn't hate First it. First of all, we could put a page in there. And, and if you're not Spencer reading a book he can't read, <laughs> it's so very rhymy. He's flustered indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I have read now 18 books 18 yeah. dr seuss yeah. books literally and clearly and cohesively i was having trouble at every step of the way okay i have so much that i want to say not actually i just have a bad memory so if i have two things to remember it's hard for okay me. brothers bazoo sounds super familiar i think we've heard of them before maybe um see i've already forgot <laughs> okay this is what I found out when you were reading yeah. and you were you I could tell you weren't that happy and because of your stumbling. First of all, c claps for you because you do not even crack the spine of the book beforehand. You could read it through before we go oh, on air. Yeah. Oh, no, it's got to be a one and done. Yeah, that was completely someone handed you the script right before you got on stage. And it was like, wow, this is nothing I can't <laughs> anticipate. But I let me propose that. Um, Mr. Dr. Theodore Seuss, Geisel, Leswig, <laughs> Siegel, like, like, Siegel, um, Lesig. It's a trick. Okay. Now on face value, uh, did I ever tell you how lucky you are? Now I'm going to tell you the classic story of what every adult tells every child. Oh, there's children. It could who, be worse. You have no food. Yeah. You don't like your food. Some, some, you know, you don't like your shoes. Some people don't have shoes. That's classic. Is this book written? as a meditation for adults because whenever you're doing something hard um so unusual to yourself takes so much concentration you cannot think about your own problems yeah so um when you were reading that you might have been stressed out that because you're on air but normally you would have read it by your you know someone would read it by themselves um you don't get to think about your upcoming um x-ray or you're worried about or you you're the fact that you owe a bill or the fact that, you know, you're completely consumed and taken up with that. And, and I was looking and I like the illustrations in this one. It was, it, they were they were the kind of illustrations that you, you they're not just, you know, they're very um sort of like a Where's Waldo type yeah. thing. But your mind was not allowed to go to your own problems and your own concerns. You were just because like you said, you struggled every word of the way, every word was not a normal word. Yeah. What do you think? I think that's a silver lining. <laughs> Come on. But I, I think it's true. 
Yeah, no, I mean, because like I said, I read a lot of Dr. Seuss books, and and this was the hardest. Yeah. But um. And you say it's for children, but a child couldn't read that book. No. A I'm, child couldn't read, read that, that book. book. That book is for ages five to eight, supposedly. That's how it's listed on Barnes and Noble. Yeah. A child five to eight is struggling with the regular English words. Yeah. Um. So therefore, he had super fun and super creativity making that, um, making it conf- like super unique. And he invented it, but they they did rhyme and they did have some. We knew what he was saying. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, perhaps. I did get consumed in it and yeah. I forgot about everything else. Right. But the dumb words. But now, <laughs> let's talk about the meaning because I don't necessarily agree with it. I know. the, me- the well, you're, Yeah, because that's an old-fashioned um, piece of advice. Yeah. Don't cry because your dog died because someone else's parent died. Yeah. And it's like it min- min- minimizes Minima- it. Everyone, yeah. everyone has their own problems. Yeah. Whether that be... Your boy- and they're and they're hurtful and valid. Yeah, rather yeah. that be your boyfriend dumped you, or was it called? Um, you don't know what you're going to eat for dinner. Obviously, saying those two things next to each other, you're like, right? Whoa, Spencer, are you comparing them? Right. But no, um, I'm not comparing them. If one person said, "What would I rather do? Have be dumped or not know what I'm eating for dinner?" Right. Now, you would say, "Of course, being dumped's better." But if you live too much with that ideology, yeah. then. You can never have any problems. Right. You can, you can, you know. You can never have anyth- anything good. Yeah. If I say I just won um, in my in my, in my my little tiny cul-de-sac, we had a little tiny play and I won best actor and it's like, well, it wasn't the Oscar. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So- yeah. Like that, that's, I think that's the thing about that ideology mm-hmm. is you would never say it the other way around as advice. Right. You would never say, oh, I, I, I got, I got an A on my test. It's like. Well, Sally Sue got an A plus. Exactly. You're not supposed to compare. So why are you comparing with bad things? Yeah. And I think if we know we're going to spin spirituality in it, every one of those people, like, should be able. Like, why? Like, yeah. What about the people that are working in the cuckoo kazoo factory? It's like, <laughs> oh, you're better off than them. It's like, so are they forgotten about? Right. Are, are they not good? It's like, right. I think. It, yeah, because it, there has to be a bottom, right? So. So I can look at someone and and I have a house and then it's like, well, um, at least you're not homeless. And then you could say the homeless person, well, at least your cardboard box isn't on the side of the highway. There has to be someone we're eventually going to reach who is sleeping in a ditch on the highway. And what do you say to that person? So that's why it's not good to keep saying you're better than him. You're better than him. There has to be one guy who and uh, I'm better than the guy who's dead or, you know. Yeah. And and, uh, like, I think, you know, like, yeah. Better advice than to be. Than to say you don't have it worse than someone is switching it gratitude right like like if instead of saying look how lucky look how um unlucky they are and so why are you complaining sometimes when you are feeling unlucky you, you can be grateful for things and the the very you know simple things like well look at the air that you are going to breathe and look at your friend his name is Steve like. <laughs> Little things of, of gratitude, I think, is more important to do yeah. that anyone can do. Like, right. Because someone could be reading this and be like, well, I am in that position. I am the person I, right. who exactly. is at the terrible job who hates life. And it's like, so who's worse than me? It's like, well, do you have things to be grateful for? And then, you know, you, you, do you have a, if you're spiritual, you know, like even that relationship with God could be something. So it should be looking up instead of, right. at least I'm not there. What am I, what am, why am I complaining? I'm not, I don't have it the worst. Right. It should be. I have it. I, I I might be going through something. I might have it bad. Yeah. But there's good things in my life as well. Do you think it's fair? You just had to do a um a drug and alcohol test for a job application. Do you think it's fair Failed that? It. No. Do you think it's fair if you got pulled over as a as a road? What is it called? Roadside test. A road. Yeah, a sobriety or test. Yeah, it's a road, about- roadside checkpoint. Yeah, something roadside. like that. Do you think it's fair if they said read that book so we can see if you're drunk? I think if people were drunk, they'd probably be able to read it better. <laughs> right? So generally, you'd say that's not fair, right? Yeah. Because you just struggled with it and you're sober. Okay, we get it. I struggled with it. <laughs> no, I'm saying, sa- you know, I have a problem with the, with the, with, the, with those roadside sobriety tests because yeah. they ask you to do physical things that not everybody can do. Yeah. And so no one would ever suggest, they would say, well, no, not everybody knows those words. Well, I'm not mean, a good reader. That's the age old thing. They say, say the alphabet backwards. And it's like, say the alphabet backwards right now. I never could. I never could either. Yeah. Z? 
I'd have to go through the alphabet over and over. And I don't know. I, I'm, I'm against that. You know what gets me so mad about them? What? It's almost like, remember we had a shame podcast? Yeah. And we talked about should people be shamed? For me, those roadside sobriety tests are a shame, are, are, are shame based. Hmm. They give you an entire test that if you're in your neighborhood, people are going to see you getting pulled over. So even if you pass, you, yeah. You walk in the line. No, but oh. the point is. <laughs> At the end, they give you a breathalyzer. We have I technology. I know. Why are Why are you making, you know, the uh, the the neighbor down the street? Because I think they're saying, they're they're trying to justify giving. I don't think you can just pull over and say breathe. I think you have to, you have to. There's steps. So it's like, pull over. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Really, prove it. Walk a straight line. Mm, that was a little crooked. Um, touch your nose. You know. And then it's like, you know what? Now we're giving you the breathalyzer. That's nonsense. But I'm against it because I wouldn't be able to do the test straight. So. You know what I'm also against? I don't even know if we have time for it because it's a little bit of a rant. So th- th- I'm kind of just not like when you said that, it makes sense. You, know, you need probable cause. Yeah. I'm very against DUI checkpoints. Oh, yeah. Um, And I'm going to tell you why. Because I, I had many of an argument about this. Yeah. And they say, drunk driver, you know how many deaths they lead to? Do you know how, how many of these things? And I'm like, I'm very against that. Yeah, of course. But I think people are, they take that information and they're like, Oh, yeah, I'm against drunk drivers. Uh, I'm for DUI checkpoints. And they forget about your personal freedoms. Yes. Um, there was a there was a shooting not too far from here where police officers died. Um, and there was a ton of illegal guns in the house. Illegal? Illegal guns. Okay. Would anyone propose that there will be random door knockings where... Police right. will come to the neighborhood, right. knock on doors, let me come in and check through your stuff. Why, and why are you against that? It's an invasion of privacy. Right. But but people lives will be saved by doing it. Right. Th- those police officers' lives will be saved. And it's like, well, yeah, but you can't just do that. And there's some gr- uh, gray area with the DUI checkpoints where you're forgetting about the fact that freedom comes with a price of risk. Yeah. And r- yeah, that's freedom right. is taken away. To live in a perfect society. And there's also something that everyone has to accept. And I usually don't make those type of statements. Yeah. But it's true. And that's certainty. Because a lot of times when people propose things like that, it's like, well, in that way, we will, we will be certain yeah. that no drunk drivers will be on the road. Yeah. And that is that is a falsehood. That is um, an unrealistic um, expectation. Like yeah. we talked about the other day about God. Like if I didn't know believing God would mean th- bad things could still happen. You know, yeah. I didn't know... If we had um, these checkpoints that people would still be driving drunk, yeah, they will. Yeah. So there is no certainty. So if you're doing anything thinking, no, I just want to be certain that I'm safe. There is no 100% certainty. Yeah. But still, did I ever tell you how lucky you are? Well, you know, people have it worse. <laughs> Some people <laughs> fail those variety tests. I know. That's, oh. what I was, that's what I was going with. <laughs> well, this was an interesting read. It was all over the place. It was all over the place. But that's all right. But hey. We'll start May differently. Um, I'll finish by saying this. I think it's always important to remember how lucky you are. Yeah. And you can do so without looking on the misfortunes of others. That's right. You you were born. You are one of God's children. Yes. And you can live a good spiritual life no matter your circumstance, no matter other people's circumstance. And so you are all lucky. Yeah. And you don't need to look down on others to to remember so. You need to look up to God. You don't can, look down. Look up. You can still buy the book to challenge yourself. Yeah. And if you want a little, uh, you know, if you feel like your brain's getting a little slow, read this. It's like uh, the opposite of a stress ball. <laughs> we'll be back next week for, it'll be May. It's gonna be May. Oh, God. Till then, go out and um, don't drink and drive. Peace. <laughs>